Friday Night Live. My name is Jed Dorsey. We are so glad that you were here with us. And I've got my partner in crime, Peter Stout, here with me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Friday awesome. Night Live. Awesome, awesome. And tonight we've got another special guest with us. Mm -hmm. He is coming to us from the great state of Montana. And I'm just thinking, uh, I don't remember exactly where you live, but <laughs> we'll find out. Let me introduce you to Ted Eckert. He's joining us tonight. His wife, Susan, is a part of Acrylic University. And wow. Ted has been part of Friday Night Lives for quite a while. So Super fun to have you, Ted. Tell us just a little bit about yourself and maybe where you are right now because I forgot where you, where you are. Yeah. Well, it's great to be here, and I have. I, I love Friday Night Lights. We, we usually sit and, well, we're here watching it together, but uh, tonight I'm, I'm, I'm on with Jed and Peter, and it's very exciting. So we're in, uh, we're in Whitefish, Montana, so uh, we're, we're up uh, as close to Canada just about as you can get. It's a beautiful space up here. We're we're on the doorsteps of Glacier National Park, and so oh, wow. excited about uh, what uh, what's going to happen tonight. So um, I'm excited to be here. Super awesome! And you know what's funny, Ted, is you said Friday Night Lights uh -huh. instead of Friday Night Live, <laughs> but I like that because that kind of is like the football thing, man. Let's uh -huh. go! Well, because yeah. it's who, my who we're playing tonight? I know it. <laughs> it's my it's roots, okay? So yeah. Friday night football is everything, and so um, it's great. But uh, man, you're because you're you're from Texas too. So I mean, mm -hmm. Friday night football, Texas. I know Texas is where those stadiums get to be like yeah. they're like big old stadiums, man. Wow. Yeah, uh, man. that's super exciting. Love my super football. fun. Super fun. So we're gonna. I'm gonna switch my view. Uh, to to be kind of what we're going to be looking at tonight, and and um, you'll be able to see my screen, and we're going to keep talking. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to keep talking with Ted, and um, we're going to keep talking with Peter. And by the way, hey everybody, I love seeing your comments. And Peter's here; he's going to be um, interacting, grabbing your comments. If you have questions, make sure you shout them out. Um, we have got here my basically kind of my normal colors here um i'm just pu pulling this up i've got ultramarine blue this is actually cadmium red here if you see i've switched out this is the quinacridone red but i'm starting to use a little bit more cadmium in this just for fun and then of course cadmium yellow and these others are the mixes of those and uh black and white i've got flat paint brushes i'm probably only going to use a couple on this size of painting and we are actually here at Kalia. Awesome. So glad you're here. Um, we're going to paint this scene from Mount Fuji, which is super awesome. I don't know uh -huh. exactly. This is looking over Tokyo, right? I, I, I think that's the, uh, the idea here. Um, Peter, you found this image, I think originally, yeah. but, um, but what a beautiful place to, you know visit virtually and uh we're gonna jump into it and then we're gonna be kind of carrying on this conversation and i think it's gonna be really fun tonight um so i'm not gonna talk too much about this but if you want to paint along you're very welcome to um but uh, mostly on on a night like tonight i don't explain everything that i'm doing but if you mm -hmm. have questions make sure you ask and i'll be happy to slow down a little bit and kind of go into it but basically i'm going to start just with drawing in the picture um and then we're going to just start blocking in the colors and then i'm going to refine the picture and then hopefully have a chance to step back and look and see if there's anything to do and i'll finish the painting but um, I wanted to just kind of get uh, Ted to talk to us a little bit about who he is and what he uh, does and just maybe a little bit about what, I don't know, Ted, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, please. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm a husband. I'm a father of four. Um, and uh, by trade, I am a business developer and a business consultant. So I do some personal coaching and consulting as well as the core of what I do is 
<clears throat> helping people take their businesses and, you know, grow to some next levels and, and uh, maybe diagnose some problems. But, uh, you know, all along the way and everything that I do, you know, I just like to, I like to create an atmosphere of whatever a, a person is walking through or whatever a business is walking through. Let's, let's find some joy. Let's find some fun. And let's just cross over some, you know, maybe some new horizons and, and grow to some new heights. That's cool. So you really are here. You're, you're somebody who helps businesses think through what they're doing. And if they've got things that they need to work on, uh, maybe helping them sort out what that could be and, and try to help them grow and, and become better at what they do. It sounds like, is that a fair summary of what you said? That's a, that's a, that's a very fair summary. And, you know, also being married to an artist, you know, I, I get to experience, you know, what an artist's, you know, pains and constraints are as well as their joys um, mm. uh, from the, the practical side of some of the things that people don't always like to do, like, you know, a budget or, or maybe marketing or those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome because that leads me into the question. I told Ted a little bit ago before we went live, I told him I have a question for you and I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> Just going to ask you when we're, when we're out there. So this is my question because um, you're a business guy and I mean, we're, I don't want to just say this is who you are because you're more than that, but you primarily work with business. It sounds like, and, and so you have that perspective. You're married to an artist. So that gives you, you know, I don't know how much you were connected to art before you were married to Susan, but um, now you're definitely connected and in, in more, probably more than you were. But mm -hmm. tell me what, how you would answer this, because this is my deal. I'm an artist. Um, and, and, you know, the people who are going to be tuning in tonight, they're, there are people who love art and and think art is is really fun but sometimes one of the things that i struggle with um is what's the point of art you know like what what good is it doing you know i look at the world and i go man there's just so many problems in the world and you know i used to work with kids i used to do um stuff that i could really kind of tangibly see um you know, this matters and, and, you know, I'm, I'm making an impact here. And, and so tell me, tell us, you know, we're, I, I don't know if there's anybody else, but this is my question for you. It's just like, why does art matter? What, what's the purpose of art? Is there a purpose of art? Why, why is, why would you say art matters in the world today? Wow. Um, I think, you know, first and foremost, art, is a communication tool. Um, I, I've always enjoyed art, and and but you know, being married to an artist, it brings a different perspective in process. So one of the things that I think is is really neat is that artists are always trying to communicate an emotion, a feeling, you know, maybe a sentiment, and it's those things that that when we look at them, you know, on the wall in the canvas or a picture, that allow us to maybe some at some point escape from where we're at, but then allow us to move to a place where, you know, maybe we need something happy or joyous, or, you know, maybe we're walking through something that might be dark and hard. And art always has a way of relating in space and time, you know, for me. And so I think that's, that's kind of the, like the umbrella of, of all of it. But I mean, it's, it's, it's for me, it's peaceful to look at a piece of art and mm -hmm. get an understanding out of it. And, and I'm not necessarily there to try to figure out the artist's motive for it. But what happens is, is that piece of art speaks to me and it speaks to me where I'm at. Hmm. Yeah. So, well so yeah, that is good. So you're saying from a, from somebody who's not an artist, art matters because oh. art can speak to you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and for an artist, what do you, do you think like, I mean, because then you're saying essentially is so as, as artists, 
we have the opportunity to communicate. We have, um, you know, things that we can share with others. Um, is there anything else from the artist's point of view that you would you would say that could could encourage an artist who's yeah. yeah. Well, if I mean, if you're if you're singing and you're struggling with you know art and your your actually your outcomes, your canvases, your paintings, you know those things. I think what you realize is take it from a perspective of you actually have the ability to change the world. I mean, one painting can literally change an atmosphere or a climate around the world, and it doesn't have mm -hmm. to have a language associated with it because. It's up to the eye and the heart, you know, to, to actually interpret it. I mean, you've got the ability to have a great influence on society. And I think that that's what artists are created for. I yeah. mean, that you're there to be on the edge and maybe communicate some things that might be edgy or controversial. But at the same time, you're there to, to put your heart into something because you're passionate about it. Mm -hmm. That's good. That was really That's good. good. We have um, a couple people in the chat, you know, offered their take on what art means to them. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of those. Um, so Valerie McNall says, art matters because we must choose to celebrate the beauty all around us. Um, that's my take on it. Guess I don't feel the need to make a statement. Um, Tammy says, I think art matters because we are created. Uh, beauty can show up in unexpected places. Mm. Um, Tammy says it touches deeply in so many ways. I also think art and history hold hands. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting yeah. way of saying that. Naomi says, I think it's a connection personally to a piece of art or a feeling or a place or time. Mm. Hey, is that a cat? <laughs> 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 so yeah so another attendee to friday night live is <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey i should get that's silver so in here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> silver. oh that's so great what's your cat's name this is kirby kirby hey kirby Hi, kirby. <laughs> kirby looks awesome wow yeah. he's pretty mm -hmm. hey. all right kirby He's got a long <laughs> That's cool. Oh, uh, I thought that uh, Peter, the the one that mentioned that art is therapeutic. Uh -huh. um, I mean, it it truly is. I mean, oh, not yeah. you know, can we look at something and receive an interpretation? But you know, also people can paint. You know, you can choose what you want to paint, but you can paint your joy. You can paint pain, and some mm -hmm. of those are actual methods of helping people deal with, you know, different emotions or struggles that they might have inside of them. Absolutely. Um, I know Winston Churchill, he had this pond on one of his properties that he painted like 30 sometimes um, because it was the pond that his daughter drowned in. Um, it wow. He used that as a way to like cope with his grief. And, wow. Yeah. They actually captured that in the crown in one of the scenes. Yeah. Um, they, it was it was actually represented there in in uh, in a film. Yeah. Really, I've never have seen that. I've never. Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. Where our our movie watching um, repertoire or like vocabulary or whatever you'd say like is growing slowly over time, but um, <laughs> it's it's mostly been uh, animated movies, kids movies like family. <laughs> Like anything that that like is good for Willow, so we're starting to venture out into more. You know, as she grows up and gets a little bit older, we're starting to watch a few more things that are like maybe more dramatic or serious. Like, you know, but it's kind of tricky sometimes because there are some movies like that that I'd like to watch that I think, oh boy, this will be a hard sell <laughs> to get <laughs> yeah. Willow to watch this. And yeah. we don't really watch that many movies when I mean, like basically. It's like something we do with her, but I'm gonna keep that in mind. You called that the crown? Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a net crown. crown. Okay, cool. I'm gonna look at that. That's a good example of Tammy, how she said, you know, art and history intersect. That's a good example of that for sure. 
Yeah, that is. Art can also be, oh, your dad. What? Your dad's on here, bro. <laughs> he is, yeah. <laughs> hey, Hans. Let me chat a little bit. Guys, that's that's Peter's dad right there. Ain't that right cool? Hans Stout. <laughs> Art can be, also be an invitation to reflect on a mystery that the artist, yeah. You know, that's the thing is, you know, you guys are talking about, um, you know, something that I wasn't really thinking that much about until, you know, somebody said the word therapy and it just made me real, you know, kind of think like, so, cause I think that there's like the two levels of does art matter, right? One level is, or, or two perspectives, maybe one is, you know, for the world, like for, for, let's just say for somebody who says I'm not an artist and I'm not creative, mm -hmm. you know, does it matter to them? Um, and I suppose that you could you could think about art in in a lot of different ways. Like you just said, you know, looking at a movie and you're like, well, there's a good example of how art and history, you know, you know, in the movie, The Crown, you know, like where that's an art, right? Like that movie making storytelling like that. Um, but then there's like so there's there's the part of it that's like, OK, um, you know, does it matter? let's just say, let's just say painting, does painting matter? And that was kind of what you were talking about a little bit, Ted was, yes, you know, it can change the atmosphere in a, in a, in a place. Like, you know, you can have a, a painting that will, or it can make you engage and think and, and go, Whoa, what's going on? You know, like this, mm -hmm. this changed my perspective on this, right? Like mm -hmm. art can do that. Um, but then there's the other part, which, which, you know, when you think about therapy, you start thinking like, um, wow, you know, like for, for people, for, for somebody, even if you don't think of yourself as creative, art can be so helpful as an expression, as a, as a voice, as a, as a therapy, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and that's just like a really interesting you know, thought that I wasn't really thinking about that much, but, um, I think that that's, you know, it's, it's kind of good to think of it in both of those ways, you know, cause if somebody never touch, picks up a paintbrush, they never, you know, play the piano, they never do anything that they would consider to be artistic. They can, they're still affected by it because we're surrounded by art all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, but also like, um, there's the personal, experience of it. That, that's, this is helpful. This is cool. I like this. Now, the other thing about art, art is so powerful that, you know, when we reflect back on Hitler and his, you know, Nazism in Germany, they actually collected up all the art because the power of art to convey, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that's really interesting, you know, I, I talk about it a lot. Um, I believe everyone has some type of creative output and maybe yours in this group, you know, at acrylic university, you're, you're defined as artists and, and canvas and photography and maybe pottery or other things or your mediums. But at the same time, you know, I'm a creative, my creative output is, is business. So I think yeah. that it's about you, we have to embrace a nature that's inside of us because it's going to come out in some way, shape, form, even if you're a, a professional athlete, I mean, you're gifted to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, we're all creative. Yeah. Yeah. I totally could not agree with you more. <laughs> I mean, that's something I, I tell people all the time. Cause I, sometimes people have a hard time seeing that about themselves, but if you just explore it a little bit, I, there, there's no person on earth that I, I think, doesn't have creativity in them just like yeah. you said 100 percent. um like i know one of my best friends he he's like he's he always talks about how he's like the worst it you know painting and drawing in the world like you know nobody is worse than him like but he's a he's a drummer and he's i can see his creativity oh, cool. really come out in that like um because there's so much creativity when it comes to, like playing music and stuff and he even though he wouldn't call himself a creative person i think he is you know i think that's a good example of that totally yeah yeah that is yeah it was funny today i was dropping willow off at school and um and um this a friend of mine actually from high school he's happens to be the the principal um of the school 
And so when he saw me, he, you know, he's not normally standing outside, but today he was out there when I dropped her off. And so he can't, he walked over and he said, Oh, I was watching something that you were doing on, you know, on, uh, I think it was like, I was on a live stream on, uh, Eric Rhodes's live stream and he'd seen some of it. And, uh, <clears throat> he said, Oh, I like, I'm so bad at drawing. Like I could never do that or blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, uh, I could never be a principal <laughs> of a school. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, <clears throat> and like, talk about being creative, you know, like you, you there's so much, uh, you know, like it, it, to develop a system. Like, I, I'm glad that you said that about yourself, Ted, like, I'm creative and I work with business, you yeah. know, like there's just so many there, you know, and in fact, one of the things that's kind of cool is Ted, say what your business card says. Like what, what do you describe yourself as? I, I describe that. So, um, I mean, I, I literally, you know, my roles and responsibility in serving someone who is, who, who I'm helping is to actually get inside and, and maybe understand their structures, their frameworks, all these different things, but also to create maybe paths and different things, you know, in different directions. So, so I think it's 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 kind of neat. I uh, I didn't stumble upon the word, you know, architect. It was actually something that I heard one day whenever I was just reflecting on some things, and we've kind of been using it ever since. That's yeah. Awesome. So, and if you didn't hear him, I don't know, my sound cut out for a minute when you said the exact word, but mm -hmm. he calls himself a, a, a business architect. Yeah. So I just think that that's really cool because it, it, it envelops the idea of creativity. Every architect I know is a yeah. really, <laughs> they're like so creative. Yeah. So Ted, you, you are, you know, you, you've done some work with creative people specifically too, right? Like, um, you know, through, you know, uh, even just like Susan now every once in a while, Susan is there in the room, I think close by. So I really <laughs> want to see Susan's hand come around again. Cause earlier she was like, you know, yeah. like, I, I, I thought it looked a little bit like, uh, you know, the, there it is. There's the hand. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's great awesome um but but like so you know because i think one of the things that that we were talking about um and and is you know like sometimes artists are are you know wanting to do they want to be in in business with art they want to mm -hmm. do something they want to sell their work they want to you know like could i make a living at this you know and and yet they're sometimes, you know, they're not equipped or they haven't had the background. They don't, they don't have a lot of business background. They're very artistic. What would you say, you know, like, a, as you think about some of these things, like what are the things, um, um, you know, that you, that you have, have worked with artists, maybe Susan, you know, as, as she's an artist, you know, with other people, what are some of the things that you have kind of, you know, worked with or helped people with? Sure. Um, I mean, structure number one, that's, that's certainly a big one, but, uh, because most artists, what they want to do is they want to do what you're doing, Jed, right now. I mean, they want to be with the paint, with the canvas or out, you know, with the camera, uh, whatever it might be. And so, so they want to be creative, but at the same time, as a business owner, you've got this functional responsibility that may weigh you down like a ton of bricks and going like, oh, yeah. you know, I've got to create a, a marketing plan and I've got to get in galleries or I've got to create product and I need a yeah. website or, you know, you, you begin, I, I've got to be on social media. You know, I, I, I need to be in so many places. And, and one of the things that I like to work with people is, is and, and where I help, you know, Susan is like, let's just create, create team you. What does team Susan look like, you know, in your art world? And if you're not strong in the financial aspects of it and making sure you're, you know, taking care of the daily routines with your receipts and all these other things and, and you know, an accountant to do your taxes or you're trying to do them on your own, you, you need to find help. So it's kind of like the, my first and foremost thing is if you're looking at building a team around you to make you successful, 
the first kind of person you need around you is an encourager. And that's what I try to be the most for Susan is I try to be the encouragement because I mean, you are in such a, can be such a negative world and people can have so many fears that they're, mm -hmm. as that you, it takes a lot of positivity to overcome the negativity that can be out there. And, and yeah. I mean, and you might even be trying to manage expectations of performance and I need to be like somebody or somebody else. And you know, those things can wear on you, but I mean, have an encourager, find instructors. I mean, you guys are on acrylic university to, to increase your skills in those things. And, but the other part are mentors, you know, find someone that, that you look up to who you can have a relationship with that can help you over those hurdles because someone has gone from point A to point B and there are people who are willing to help. So, I mean, those are the three main things, but, but all along your way, you're trying to do these things called creating fans and customers. You can be in a business, you can make profit. It's just going to take some work and it may take work that you're not comfortable with. Yeah. Mm. Do you find that there are, what are the things that you think, is, is there anything that is maybe more generally something that people don't like to do? You know, well, as far as that? Yeah, it's the administrative <laughs> things. I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's the things that aren't fun. And, and I mean, it's, it's kind of like, one of the things that most people, they think, well, I, I can create and put all of this out on canvas and I have all these, you know, paintings to sell, but how do I sell them? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, do you go to, you know, some type of a local farmer's market and start there? Or do you find galleries that take, you know, new artists, you know, on mm -hmm. at times? And, and I mean, you, you you're just going to have to kind of walk through that. But I think, the outside of the administrative things, the biggest thing I think artists struggle with could be fear. And they tend to be really um, introspective and not necessarily extrovert where they like to be mm -hmm. among people. So you're going to have to overcome, you know, that fence. You're going to have to climb over it and get on the other side where it's okay to interact with people. And the other thing is nobody likes to be told no. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many times have you been told, no, Jed, this is not the gallery for you or, or whatever it might be? Mm -hmm. Never. <laughs> oh, <it's just> so <laughs> 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 no, I know. It's actually, that's, that's such a true thing. You know, you reminded me of two things. One is I remember listening to, now this shows how, you know, I'm a, I'm kind of a typical artist in the sense that, I've had to like work on the business part of it a lot. Like, I, I don't know if I've said this before, but I actually went to college the first day of my college career. I was a business major and I dropped out of business that day. Like I, I went to one class and I thought this is not for me. And I kind of wish now that I had stuck with it, you know, cause I'm like, man, that would have been helpful. Yeah. But over the years, you know, even like a year ago, Peter and I were watching these videos and it was um, Tony Robbins. Right. And it was like this business mastery course. And, and mm -hmm. we're like trying to learn, you know, stuff. And, and one of the things he, there was a lady on there who really hated, she, 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 they were talking through stuff that they didn't like. And, and he, she said, um, she hated doing the paperwork and, and she would like, let it pile up. And, and, and so this is a business person. It's just, but I think like, if you think about an artist an artist likes to create stuff, but it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of the same thing with a business owner, right? Like an entrepreneur mm -hmm. likes to create businesses they like to have initiatives they like to do things and so you kind of have to and if you're wanting to go into business that's probably part of your mentality too as an artist you know like but the so the the struggle of the you know the little task the administrative things can be real and anyways the one thing that i remember from that was tony robbins basically like started asking questions and reframing it for her and saying okay so you care about your customers, right? Like you care about your clients. Like you want them to have a good experience, right? And, and she just kept saying, yes, yes, yes. You know, like, and, and he eventually worked it back to, to this place where, you know, she 
changed her perspective on the the paperwork because yeah. he, he just like re retold it in a way that was like making her see that that paperwork was so crucial to her clients having their own joy, their own success, their own life, you know, like all this stuff. And it was just like, it was such a cool, do you remember that Peter? Like how cool that was? I do. Because it was um, all about perspective and, and you know, yeah, it was so and, interesting. Well, I mean, he talks about this all the time, right? But if you can ask good enough questions and get them to arrive at the conclusion, you know, then they're, it sinks, it sinks, sinks in deeper than if somebody just comes along and says, Hey, you need to do this, you know? Um, you're right, Peter. I mean, it's, it's much better when the person is engaged and they have that aha moment. Yeah. They sit back and go, you know what? I really need to institute some changes in my life. Yeah. And I find that that's, that's what I end up doing a lot. It's like, you know what? You may not like the administrative things, but guess what? You need to you need to master them to the point where you're using the tools that are out there. There are so many tools that people can use. I mean, and especially if you're going to have you know uh, uh, you're going to have an online shop or online store. I mean, you've got customer service on top of everything else, and and you don't want a negative review. Yeah. So want to make sure that you're you're providing for your customer that top level of of, you know, service in those things. And, and that starts with some fundamentals that you just got to overcome and work. <laughs> and yeah. So I love how you started that, what you were saying too, though, you know, because the first thing that you said was, you know, really what you need is a cheerleader. You need a fan. You need somebody mm -hmm. who's an encourager for you. Right. Because yeah. there's, it's, it's hard. Why? I mean, is that any different than, I mean, is, do you feel like there's any difference between uh, an artist in that? Or is that pretty much across the board where you'd say, you know, if you're, if you're going to do anything like you need, you need somebody who's just in your court or is there something particular about, you know, for an artist? I don't know. I'm just asking. Well, I think what happens is, is first of all, you, you have to do that self-evaluation. And so as you do a self-evaluation, what you're going to find out is what, you know, some of your strengths are and what some of your weaknesses are. But in the world of art, I think that there's been, there can be so much negativity that has to be overcome that if you don't have good self-talk, I mean, if you're not telling yourself, you know, who you are and what you can do, I mean, there is so much negative that's out there. I mean, just look at your Instagram feed or your Facebook, you know, and you start, you know, you start looking at those things and, and people have a much more of a tendency to be negative than positive. So you've got to get into a space where you're literally, number one, your best cheerleader, but you surround yourself with people who at the end of the day, you know who to call if you've had a bad day, because that person is going to be, yeah, honest with you. But at the end of the day, they're, they're there to lift you up and motivate yeah. you to get out of bed the next morning and do it all over again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's so good. That's so true. I mean, I feel like um, it's interesting thinking about because I want to be that kind of person, right? Like I want to be an encourager. Uh, I feel like with art, you have several things that are hard, right? Like if somebody is just wanting to create, I think it takes courage you know we are always talking about that how it takes courage to be creative and and to do something like that but then then you throw in like well what if they're trying to start a business wow like that's taking it to that's doubling it right or multiplying you know kind of the courage and what it what they'll need and um yeah i'm just like thinking you know what um you say something here though you say be yourself. Don't be an imitator. Be a creator. Yeah. What What do you mean by that? Oh my goodness. Um, you know the 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 world is full of so many people who are um, who are posers. Okay, and mm. they're imitators, and they think that if they imitate someone, 
they're going to be successful. And that's a fundamental flaw in our thinking. Now, hmm. I might need to imitate one of Jed's painting techniques, okay? Because, man, within how I paint, it will really enhance who I am. But I don't need to try to replicate exactly every stroke because that's going to be time consuming and it's going to, it's going to wear you out because you're actually not operating in what I call your sweet spot. You're actually hey. in this other person and you're not being yourself. So don't be an imitator, be a creator. You may find something that works for somebody, bring it into your perspective, your applications and, and create, well, you know, things in us that, Hey, <laughs> I heard the voice. Hey, there's things in us that we're only created to do. You know, I, I'm not created to, to paint like Jed. I'm created to paint like Susan. Yeah. And it's for a reason. Yeah. And I, and I think it helps. You know, one of the things I journaled today was that I was thinking about passion and fear. You know, we can either we can live in passion or we can live in fear. But passion is like the fuel to drive you to this point to where you hit this point of courage. Yeah. And that's what we were talking about. And when you hit that point of courage, what happens? Then you lose fear. You become fearless. And uh -huh. I, I remember I used to play uh, a lot of softball and I had this hat and I loved to wear it because it was a it was actually um, a motorcycle uh, company, but the, the words on it were no fear. And yeah, and, but it, yeah. it takes practice and work and the right people around you to move your passion to the point where you just become courageous and in courage, mm -hmm. the sky's the limit. Yeah, that's, that's good. That. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, when it's something you're super passionate about, it makes it a lot easier to push through those times when it is hard, you know, and you're doing tasks that are less than ideal. Another thing that uh, Tony Robbins talked about in that thing we were watching is he was like, you know, make these tasks enjoyable. He was, talk he was talking about one lady who had to make like, or was it him? I don't, I don't remember him. him, but yeah. He got home from a trip and he had to make like a hundred phone calls that he yeah. didn't want to make. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but he sat in like a jacuzzi or something and just like, enjoyed the moment and he like made all these phone calls and because he felt better he put so much more energy into all these phone calls and stuff like that um and i think the same thing is totally true you know for um an artist who's looking to you know do something like that um yeah i think what he hits on too a lot that a lot of people hit on is just management and you know some one of the be better at is is time management so so actually look at your day and, yeah. you know, maybe it's an hour and you allocate an hour to doing that and you figure out your personality and is it best for you to allocate that first thing and get it out of the way or is it better to allocate it at the end of the day? You have to know your own, you know, time management skills in that. But if, if you come up with a plan, plans always help us, you know, manage those expectations, but the plan will actually allow you to be in your sweet spot in your creative sweet spot for longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good. Um, oh, man, I had a, Oh, I've got a question. I actually, this, let me just take a small diverge or diverge from this just for a second. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask somebody out there if, if anybody has, uh, if you want to, uh, you can text the word win to 425-310-4182. And I actually, um, oh, let's see. Oh, it says that they can hear me fine, but not Peter or, or Ted very well. That's too, that's weird. I can hear them fine, but, um, okay, sorry. Can somebody tell me if when you text that number and you text the word win, does it come back to you with um, a... A, an automated message because I, I tried to set up something today and I just want to see if it works. Cause did you know, Peter, I, there's a way to set up an automated message. I did not. And I know. Let me try. I, I, I know. I, I've 
looked at it, I thought, before. But anyways, well, I'll let somebody kind of get back to me on that. But uh, oh. Ted, yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh, this, everything it does. So. Never right. Nice. Text it went in. It, it worked. Uh-huh. Nice. Perfect. That's so awesome because now we'll at least, like, you'll know if you got entered. So if you don't get something back, you guys, then you know you have the wrong number. Which <laughs> means, Peter, Peter, what we should do is we should make sure that the, the other number, your number, doesn't have any automated reply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so Ted, I see something else that you had written down um, for me to kind of think about here. It, just a thought of yours. But, but you say this. Failure is your springboard to success. Peter, can you write that and put that up there as a as a topic? Failure, failure is your springboard to success. I can do that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, we live we live in a world today where it doesn't seem like it's okay to fail. But if we look mm-hmm. And even look at some of the great inventors. I mean, we know that some kind of inventors. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, Peter, can I just ask you to do, can you say topic and then the, the writing underneath it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> too, it, failure is just on the screen too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that was good. I think we all needed a laugh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so so um, I think I was where I was at was um, a lot of inventors actually had to go through the process of actually creating something a hundred, a thousand, you know, hundreds of times before they get it right, before they're there with the one that works. What if they had not gone through the process and had the endurance to get to the end Till they had the right working mm-hmm. invention. It's the same thing for you and I. Society has a tendency to go, oh man, you failed. And they make it negative. But it is not a negative. Failures are actually positives and they create the steps for you to continue to walk on until you're successful. Or it's just like walking out to the end of a springboard. You know, the further you get out, the more the board goes up and down. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you're launched into the air. So you just keep taking those steps. You keep, and those steps are called risk. You keep taking risk. And, and if you do fail, embrace it and go, you mm-hmm. know, wow, lesson learned. Keep moving forward. And, and that's the thing I think society maybe misses out on is that we just need to learn from those things. And as we learn from them, we gain so much more. I mean, we actually have taught our children a posture of, it is, it's okay to fail because I learned from it. There's mm-hmm. stones for us. And so, um, yeah, fa- failure is just, it's just your launching, you know, it's the yeah. launch into to where you're supposed to be. Absolutely. I isn't, or one of my favorite quotes is like, if you're not failing, you're not aiming in the right direction or something like that, you know? Um, yeah. I talked about that. I, I just made a little creative encouragement video. Some of the people may have watched it uh, today already if they did their miniature challenge. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I was talking about that exact thing of how it, there's a quote that I like. It says, Crea- creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. Wow. <laughs> and um, But, you know, I was talking about how, you know, there's been times when I've painted a painting and I've been working on something and I'm trying to figure out a a specific part of it, right? Like I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, like say I wanted to paint the sky and I put down a color and then it wasn't quite right. So I put down another color and it still wasn't quite right. And then I put down a third, maybe a fourth color or as you just doing little shifts and different stuff. And I finally, I think, oh, that, that, there it is. There it is. And what happens is when I look at that, I realize that all of those colors that were laid down affect the painting. Mm -hmm. They might not come through a ton, but there's little bits of it that comes through. 
And it helps the, the pain. It's like every once in a while I look at it and I go like, wow, the process that allowed me to get to the, the end was better than if I would have just, you know, grabbed that, fir- that final color and I would have just put it straight down because it wouldn't have had all that nuance in it. And it kind of reminds me of what you're saying. Like the process is actually where we grow. It's actually where we like, you know, um, we discover things. And so just that idea, I love it. Failure is your springboard. There's, there's another word that I like to use, um, you know, depending on who we're talking to or, or who I'm talking to. Um, the other word for failure is training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so good. Go. Training. Yeah. So talk about that. Like, I mean, I, I get it, but just to make sure that, you know, why would you, why would you say that? Well, I would say that because I mean, I mean, look, we just, we just witnessed in the Super Bowl. We watched Tom Brady who has, now, you know, his seventh Super Bowl win, but he I had just forgotten about that, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh... Yeah. But I mean, he didn't get to where he is without throwing interceptions no. or having bad plays and those things or Mm-mm. practicing and, you know, maybe running a, a play 10, 15, 20 times before they get into the game to execute it. So, mm-hmm. so you can look at the every time that it went wrong and go, ah, oh, we're not going to get it right, which is a perspective. Or you can look at it like do it again. It's like whenever I coach baseball, I throw the ball. You know, the batter would miss the ball. It's like, hey, no worries. Do it again. And, you know, mm-hmm. you, I might throw it six times while they're really learning to hit until they hit that point where they connect with the ball. And now yeah. their whole perspective changes. It's like, I can do it. It's mm-hmm. just training to get you to the point of mastery. And I also think that, like, especially in business, our – you know, the time scales for our failure can be like way longer. You know, like when you're playing baseball, you're swinging at a ball. It's like instant. You can do it over and over and over again. Right. But in a business, it can be super easy to like not have the right perspective on things because the time scales for your failure can be like way longer, you know, (laughs) that's very true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Businesses are built in years. Yeah. Although there, we were talking today about, you know, they're, they're what we call, you know, those, uh, um, overnight success stories there are there are businesses that are overnight successes but Mm -hmm. at that point they're still going to go through the processes of some failures and learning that's only refine them and make them better Mm -hmm. so when you look at art business don't look at it like okay i've got to accomplish this in a day or a week Take it on as this is something that I need to commit a little bit of learning to so that I become a master and an expert in it as well as my art form. Mm-hmm. That's good. Absolutely. It's really good. Yeah, I think that that's super helpful. I mean, you know, when, when I was, uh, I just made the jump to be a, a full-time artist and I think it was I'm just thinking I think it was that very first year I was at a workshop and uh, I was talking to a woman outside we were painting outside and and I told her yeah I just became a full-time artist and she said well something like because she was a business owner and she said really like you it, it'll take you five years to to uh, to really like be in the group. Like, like there was something about five years, you know, it doesn't mean that it can't be faster, but Uh like you said, I mean, the general rule I would say is, yeah, I mean, you can't expect it to just automatically jump, jump, you know, like uh, real fast. It, it, it's going to be a process. There's going to be ups and downs. And I always think that your expectation matters so much because I mean, I feel like when I get the most discouraged about something, it's when I realize that my expectations were, you know, like I'm disappointed, right? If I'm not disappointed, 
if I'm thinking, well, you know, this is this is what I thought. Like, I'm not going to get discouraged about it as much. I'm just going to be like, this is what I this is what I expected, you know. Um, and and I think like uh, just the reality of what you're saying, Peter, is like, yeah, even like a painting, you know, like it's the business part of it is a much longer process. Like a painting, what yeah. you might spend a day, two days, a week would be a long time couple weeks would be a really long painting but it's that's still only two weeks <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. if you're yeah. investing you know and you're trying to make a business it's like you're talking about uh yeah weeks months years and that can be hard that can be hard it can be it can be discouraging but it's definitely going to be better if you go into it with that yeah. expectation uh Susan wants me to read what I posted on Instagram today. Okay. Because okay. it ties right into this. Um, strength and growth only come from continuous struggle, said the butterfly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. I mean, that's good. It's, it goes back to one of the things in the beginning. It's like, okay, I'm not, if you're not good at business, if you don't under those, understand those things, God, we have so many tools that are available. I mean, there, there's the internet, you know, there are people who can help you, you mm -hmm. know, find that mentor who's a great artist and a great business person and see if you can learn, you know, uh -huh. it's, that, that's a but part that of it, but you're right. And Susan was just saying that the, it's that struggle. It's in that process that you become refined and you become, who, you become who you are. It's, mm -hmm. it, something that you just can't walk away from you you can't say no i don't need to do that because what will happen is is you'll only be a part of who you are so embrace all of it and just then like i say work within your time management and your expectations and then find necessary tools to help you in that that's super helpful i i feel like uh when when you know when you were talking about um, you know, the idea of, of an encourager, somebody who's on your, your team, who's on your side, kind of to be there. Um, mm -hmm. it made me think about, uh, just the idea of, um, a team, I guess. And, and like, whether or not it's a team that's actually working with you, or maybe it's just like, people who feel like they're part of your team, you know, because they're, they're friends or they're, you know, they're on your side and, and you know, you can call them or something like that. Like you said, um, I feel like that's such an important thing. You know, when, when Renee and I first started out going into this art business, um, we were, we were thinking a lot about who do we know that, <laughs> could help us, you know, like who do we know that's good in business and, or, you know, just could give us some perspective because I knew enough. I mean, thankfully I'd been in business with other stuff enough to know that I didn't know anything. Like I, mm. I, I really think that, um, <laughs> that was a blessing that I didn't even realize was just like, we, we, I'd had a house painting business before. Um, I'd had a construction business and, I would say that they were, you know, I did a good job at what I did, but I knew that I wasn't that good at the actual business part of it. You know, like, I mean, they were okay. It, they, they, they provided for us, but they weren't, you know, necessarily uh, what they could have been. And, um, and I think it was helpful that we went into it kind of with that, uh, that knowledge of we need help. You know, let's, who do we know that could kind of, and I remember we wrote an email, like one of the first things we did was we wrote an email to anybody that we knew that was like, uh, we thought would be a good mentor or a good help. Like, it, could they give us any advice? Could they, you know, just anything? And we were like, our idea was to come up with a board of, of, of advisors mm -hmm. um, and, and just so that we didn't, Partly, you know, part of it was like, you know, our own sanity in a sense. It's like, 
It's mm. hard. It's lonely. You know, being in business, um, doing something on your own, you're on a different schedule a lot of times. You know, like you, nobody's telling you to go to work. Uh, you know, like you have to do a lot kind of on your own. And uh, I think it's it, you can't really say too much about, you know, having people in your corner um, mm. to, to just who are there and to kind of be an encouragement and to maybe to give you some, some feedback or different stuff that, that, uh, you know, I don't know. That's. Well, I mean, what you're talking about, Jed, is just the very practical steps. And when you're, when you're passionate about something, say you're passionate about, you know, art and painting, it's going to have a tendency to captivate you to the mm-hmm. point where it's going to drive and, you know, you could literally end up in your studio with you driven by your passion and have 300 paintings around you. Yeah. But, but if you don't take that step or if you don't have that person to interrupt you and say, hey, you know, you've created 30 paintings. Don't you think you ought to put those on the Internet or Instagram? Mm. Maybe take one to a gallery and have yeah. some look at it. Well, then you don't have a perspective of even the value of your artwork. And so I think, you know, as an encourager for Susan, there's certain things that I can do. I can help her, you know, in the framing and the structure within the business aspect of it. But there's not a lot that I can do other than really look at her content and, you know, and and speak into content. I don't know color palettes and and all those other things, although I'm. I'm learning more, mm, and more. Yeah. but, but if you'll have those people and that abortive advisors, I mean, that's a great thing. You sit back and go, who do I know that's good at business and, and, you know, the analytics part of it, who do I know that's just my fan. And at the end of the day, they're going to lift me up no matter, you know, how bad it is. So, <laughs> yeah. oh man, that's so, I mean, honestly, you know, I don't know if you know this, but, um, so we created, we, we, uh, s- this was the first time really that we've done this, but we, we, uh, when we were thinking about the membership this year, we, we were like, what are we going to, you know, provide this year? And one of the f- forms of feedback we got was somebody who said, you know, I just feel like I get stuck with fear and, you know, I just, something like that. And, and I was thinking about it. I thought, you know what I would love to do is give people just a, just a, a sp- talking about the word springboard, um, you know, to give them something that would be a very simple lesson that would really just be there to go, okay, look, you, you're doing it. Keep going, you know, like take off now, you know, like mm-hmm. this, is, this is a springboard for you so that you, you stay creative. You don't get bogged down with huge projects and never do them because they're so daunting, mm-hmm. but like, Here's something very tangible. Anyways, we we thought, well, you know what? This maybe this is a product that we could sell outside of the membership too. And so it was like one of the first things that we've really sold outside the membership. And we were thinking about it. We're like, well, man, um, it's really nice to have a community to come into. But because we're not selling this in the membership, we don't want to give away, you know, the the things like the live Q and a and, and, and all the other stuff that comes with the community that we have for, for members. Mm-hmm. So we are trying to like, we're always problem solving, right. And we're trying to figure out what to do. And we decided that we wanted to create another community. And yet that was going to be daunting because it's like, wow, it just, it's a lot of work mm-hmm. to, you know, yeah. communicate with people and make sure everything's going and encourage people and whatever that needs to happen. So, you know what I did is I was like, who do I know that has encouraged me? Like, who could do this? Who would be a good encourager for people? And (laughs) who did I think of? I thought of my mom. Ah. And so my mom is actually the, the, she's kind of like the, the main administrator, the main person in the other community. And she's there and she encourages people. And, and uh, that was the main goal of that. But I feel like you know, you've said it several times, but I just feel like that role is such an important role. I feel like to some degree, um, we need 
instruction, we need help that way. But if we don't have that person in our, in our corner to encourage us, we will lose heart and we will, you know, we'll give up. We'll, we'll do something else that's going to take less effort. I mean, there's a few exceptions. I know that there are people who are really internally driven and they have a goal and they'll, they'll do it. But they're not the ones that are generally like um, probably getting, I don't know. I don't know. They, they'll figure out a way, you know, like they're, they're kind of that kind of person. But a lot of people, a lot of like me included, I think that if there, if I don't have somebody to kind of cheer me on, um, I lose heart, you know, and, and, um, it's easy to lose heart at least. Well, so I mean, think of it, you're talking about the, the, the diving board. I mean, there's a difference between a platform diving board and a springboard because mm. a springboard is literally designed to be able to launch you higher into the air. And I mean, we live in a world that needs so much encouragement, but at the same time, if it, it kind of, it's like the, the radio station in your head that you choose to tune into and listen to. I can choose to turn into and listen to all the negative, and it might be my own negative self-talk or it might be negative talk coming from another direction. But then what I, I could do is I could, you know what? No, I'm not gonna listen to that radio channel anymore. I'm gonna listen to another one. And it, it's like, what do you read? I mean, reading yeah. is a big part of it. What do you listen to? Do you listen to podcasts where people are actually talking about, you know, encouraging you and, and, and doing things differently? And at the same time, are you meeting with someone face to face? Uh -huh. so they can actually speak into your life and, and encourage you through those things. But I mean, the springboard is, is like, it's, it's so really, really cool in the analogy of, if I just keep walking a little farther, what happens is next thing I know I'm at the end of the board and I'm, and I'm lawn. And that's what, you know, we want to see with, with our, ourselves, our own children, you know, whether it's a, a, a business that we're working with or, or you with, you know, fellow artists is that we want to see people be successful. And, mm -hmm. and I think that you, you just, you've got to build that community. And you, if, if it's not something that's natural to you, you're going to have to step out of a comfort zone and you're going to have to, to do something that, you know, might be awkward to you to create that community around you or join that community because uh -huh. it's, it's going to you up and move you into that, that into a better creative space. Yeah. I think that's so cool. And so, um, I'm just going to look here. Okay. Well, so, real Oh yeah, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just want to read this comment um, from Deborah Stokes. Um, she says, this discussion is exactly what I needed to hear. I want you to know how relevant and helpful all of what you're saying is to me. Divine timing, thank you. So that's awesome. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, Happy that is. could be encouraging to you. Well, because that was actually what I was just going to ask too, was because part of the reason that uh, we wanted, I wanted to have Ted on tonight is because mm -hmm. we were talking the other night or the other day and I, I just got to know Ted and Susan, we just kind of had a talk about a week ago or so and we were just talking about what they did and um, what Ted was doing with, because he's, he's, you know, kind of been, coaching people for a long time, but more recently been kind of working with some artists and different stuff. And we were like going, man, I wonder if there'd be, uh, if, if that'd be helpful for people in acrylic university. And, and again, we, we're always trying to like figure out, okay, how can we support people the best? How can we bring what, it, what people actually would, would, would really need and want. And Oh my goodness, I just have to do something here real quick. Cause we've got a special guest in the, in the <laughs> studio now. Yes, we have two special guests, of course, but, um, okay. Look at this, everybody. It's the two stars <laughs> of the show, <laughs> Willow and silver. Hey, Willow, guess what? Do you see? Look, do you it's see? Kirby. Hey, silver, open your eyes, buddy. There's another <laughs> cat over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh man. Oh man. That's awesome. Thanks for coming that's in, adorable. Willow. 
<laughs> I'm so glad that Kirby was around, but I don't know if they even caught a glimpse of each other, man. Uh, that's um, real quick. Uh, Tracy, Tracy made a good point. She said, Peter should remind everybody to like this. So yeah, go ahead and like the stream. Um, if you haven't already, it keeps the trolls away and, uh, helps keep YouTube happy with us. So, <laughs> um, be sure to do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, can go on Jen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing that too. Um, and if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe to the channel and stuff like that too. But yeah, I guess that's, that's my question is just like, do you guys feel like, I mean, I know people are in different places. Some people are not, um, necessarily pursuing art in business or anything like that. But, mm -hmm. but we were talking about it the other day and we're like, man, there's a lot of stuff that we're talking about that is just helpful across the board, right? Like it's not even just if you're trying to be an artist, but sometimes it's just like, you know, having a positive, you know, take on what you're doing and, mm -hmm. you know, breaking through some of the, some of the ways that you have been, you know, maybe thinking or things like that. But I'm just trying to get a gauge from people. Like, would you be interested if we could figure out a way to get some of, you know, what Ted's talking about, if, if he, um, you know, cause what we we're wondering about is like, if he was willing to come on a Q and a, uh, maybe even to do something like a, uh, like a little workshop or something for those people who are going like, man, I'm, I'm wanting to take the next step. I want to figure some more stuff out with this. Mm -hmm. Um, is there, is there, is there like an interest there for that? And, and also, um, I wish that I had it ready, but I, if I'm planning to put out a, um, a little survey form um, to get some feedback too, because if we do end up figuring out a way that we can move forward, we'd love to get some um, feedback in terms of what would be the most helpful. Um, but anyways, that's what I wanted to ask. So if you got mm -hmm. comments, um, <laughs> Beverly, <laughs> Bev, I just want to say hi. I am, <laughs> um, I'm so glad to see your name and to see that you're here. <laughs> Bev is a friend. Um, Bev and her husband Bill. When we had our studio at the Camino Commons, Bev and Bill, they were like, man, they were the most regular people every day at two thirty because our studio was part of a, um, a marketplace where they served coffee and, and different pastries. I mean, that was like the, in a way it was the worst place to work in a way it was the best place to work. I had to live with the temptation of <laughs> like, uh, fr a French bakery every day, <laughs> but it was all, it smelled so good, like all the time. But anyways, they would come at 2.30 every day and they were the most amazing, fun people. And I just, you know, Bill passed away last year and I know it's been, uh, you know, such a huge, huge loss and transition for you, Bev, but just know that our hearts are with you and I'm just mm -hmm. really glad. I saw that you were with us last week after the fact and uh, made my heart so happy to see your, your name and... Anyways, hi. Glad you're here. Glad to have you, Bev. Um, Bev B says, there are a couple of Bevs on here tonight. Hi, name buddies. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, so Jed, I'm just watching you and you're at the light, you know, the the, the light on the side of the mountain there. And, yeah. And it, you know, it totally brings a different perspective. And I hmm. think, you know, one of the things that is really, really interesting, it, we have to think of things in a whole, um, because if it's like a pie and there are pieces hmm. of pie that are missing, then, you know, if we, if we go to take it, we're not going to get the best value for that pie. I mean, if I, if I go to somebody and I take them a pie and two slices are missing, I can tell them that, you know, for the, for the full price of the pie. But, but what happens is, is as you, as you, you know, bring everything into a full circle and you complete it, 
on things actually become maybe clearer and easier for you. I was yeah. listening, to I'm listening to something today to, you know, just get with my positive self-talk. Okay. And the guy was talking about how easy it is for people to not operate in, in a place of rest. And there's hmm. so many challenges that are going on in their day-to-day -day life, maybe getting kids here, got to get to work, got to get dinner cooked, what, what, it, you know, whatever those challenges are that we can get so busy that we forget to rest. And sometimes we even forget to take maybe a day off in the week and rest. But for, for artists and for creatives, rest is especially, I mean, it, it's, it's necessary for you because if you don't take that downtime to rest and relax, you you miss out on the time when your mind goes into that space where all of a sudden you begin to see images to paint or mm -hmm. your things and and so you have got to take a i mean we stress to people even business owners you have to build rest into your plan and yeah. I mean, it's 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 crucial and it'll actually bring more light and and life into what you do because you'll begin to paint out of a place of, of peace and comfort versus a place, a place of production. And I've uh -huh. just been out. That's, that's so good because I, I feel that, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, I can tell a huge difference in myself when I have been pushing it and pushing it and, and, and not resting. And, yeah. uh, you know, like, I, you know, as a Christian, I'm very thankful for Sundays because Sunday is kind of a day where I don't work. I don't do anything really of, you know, it's a different day for me. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's so nice because I, I know that, you know, it, well, I just feel like it's a gift to, to have that. Right. I mean, it's, it's maybe not, you know, it's kind of sad in some ways. I mean, in, 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 there are certain, um, you know, times in, in, in culture and, and in history where, you know, there was more like a, a standard of, okay, you know what? There isn't anything open on, on Sundays. You know, there isn't, everybody gets a day off. Right. And, and I mean, I know that that's pretty inconvenient in a lot of ways. Like if you like Chick-fil-A and you ever pull up on a Sunday and you're like, what? They're closed. You know, <laughs> it's a bump. Right. <laughs> but, um, but I always think about that. I'm like, you know what? I bet if you ask any Chick-fil-A employee, if they like that, I bet you'll hear every one of them say, I love the fact that we're not open on Sundays because it means that they have at least one day every week that they mm -hmm. know they won't be going into work. And I feel like, you know, for, for, uh, you know, as I think about like when I'm most creative and when I'm most, it's, it's after I get, it's after I get rest, yeah. you know, like after I get renewed, I, I go out and I, I walk in the woods or I, you know, have something that kind of puts beauty back into me because I think that's what it's about is like, you can't just, we're not machines. We're not mm -hmm. always just made to produce. We have to be putting stuff into us as well. And I think that that's part of what rest is. It's, it's like it allows yourself to, uh, you know, build something back into your life. Yeah. If your cup is empty, you know, if, you're, if your cup is empty, then how creative can you be? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If your cup is think how creative you can be. And the way we fill our cup up, is that we have to structure rest in there. And you'd be really surprised when you're sitting talking to the owner of a business who has never rested, okay? He's basically lived it seven days a week, you know, 365 days a year for yeah. years. Whenever you put this concept of rest, I mean, he started getting new business ideas and yeah. things that would increase his profitability and he's like i didn't know what would happen if i took a moment and actually <laughs> my mind off what would come out yeah that was for sure and like 
I mean, same thing for me. Like when I'm trying to think of something, like what do we need to do next or what do I need to do next? Like trying to force it almost never works. It's always when I'm like doing something else or like in my downtime, like I get this flash of genius and I'm like, oh, I'm so inspired. I know what I need to do now. You know, like, um, yeah, for sure. Almost, almost all my good ideas come in the middle of the night. <laughs> I know. No I know. joke. <laughs> Yeah, totally. That's interesting, though. Um, I'm imagining that you're kind of referring to an actual scenario where you're, you know, you're you're talking to somebody and they're they're implementing something like that, and then all of a sudden they're having a breakthrough and they're coming up with real world, you know, solutions to problems that they've, or maybe not even problems, but just ideas that they've had, and it, it's so counterintuitive, right? Like. I remember hearing um, this idea. I don't know how true this is because I've, you know, I'm just kind of retelling what I heard. I don't remember where I heard it or anything like that. But there was a story about the, you know, kind of the wagon trains when they're going across the United States. And there was a, there were two that left at the same time. And one company, you know, they traveled for six days and then they, on the seventh day they stopped and they were going to, you know, take that day and they were going to rest. And the other company was like, well, we're not. We're, we're going to keep going. And over, you know, the first uh, couple months, that, that team that never stopped, they were way out ahead, you know. But it's a long journey. And after a little while, the, the team that never rested got so worn out and so bogged down that the team that rested every every seventh day they actually ended up passing that that first team and they beat them by a long ways you know and and so it's just kind of an interesting thought that you know you know you think about short term things and you think um okay this doesn't make sense but you think about long term things and and i think just the 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 fact that it is very counterintuitive like why i've got so much to do why would i stop you know why would i take a break you know there's there's so many things to do and yet there is this kind of way that it actually will benefit you in ways that you couldn't even imagine So I want to take a break for a second just to say, hey, let's get people to, um, I'm not, well, actually, give me another couple minutes here. I'm going to do a little bit more, but make sure you guys, if you have not yet, uh, well, where's that number? Oh, it's hidden behind Peter and Ted. There it is. <laughs> no, no, you can keep it, Peter. I was just joking. Uh, <laughs> text the word win to this number 425310 and uh you may end up with this painting and hey peter do you have any way of looking ahead to see two weeks from now where uh where we're going i sure do i, I can uh, uh, definitely check that for us um cool. one thing i just wanted to mention a couple people in the chat i've talked about they're wondering when you're going to address the tangent where the mountain meets the pagoda um oh, over here <laughs> yeah, yeah right yeah over on the right well it's actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut the i'm gonna cut the sky down lower i uh -huh. screwed up a little bit like with the the drawing but uh -huh. i i already tried to fix it and now i'm just not gonna fix it anymore i'm just gonna make the 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 sky go down further there you so go. yeah i know i know i screwed that up you guys good eyes <laughs> yeah, <Dorina. laughs> it's like a sweeping line right now yeah, there um, were a few the few people that were saying um, that's driving them crazy. Like, it's all they can look at. Uh, sorry about that, but I'm going to drive you crazy for a little bit longer. Um, but anyway, so next place we are traveling is Nova Scotia, and that will be on March 5th. Same time, same place, March 5th, Nova Scotia is where we're going to travel next. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um so, and then we were talking, so like last week, if you were with us, we gave away a painting uh, and it, we had kind of a special night where it was like, it wasn't a world tour thing. It was mm -hmm. more like we were doing a 
Valentine's Day special. And we had some people who wrote in and said, because we, did, we only had the one painting of mine to give away. And yet there were, you know, there were a number of other, uh, other stories that we talked about. And, and we we're thinking it would have been awesome if we could have given away more paintings. And I actually got a text from somebody this week who said, mm -hmm. Hey, um, if you're interested, you know, I, I said this during the chat, but I, I would be willing to share some of my paintings, you know, with, with people. And so I think that, um, it'd be kind of cool wouldn't it? if, if we, you know, if there were people who were willing, you know, because especially with things like the miniature challenge. Now, one of the tricks is that some of the people who, who shared stories, they are part of the, um, the miniature challenge. So it'd be like, I was saying like, It'd be cool if people from the miniature challenge gave paintings away, but then I was like, well, what if they were giving their miniature challenge painting to another person in the miniature challenge? Yeah. And that wouldn't necessarily make that much sense. Yeah. So, um, but I do love the idea of, of, is there a way that we could, you know, encourage each other to, I don't know. I don't know what difference we can make exactly, but mm -hmm. you know, even what we were talking about earlier with Ted about, the idea of art making a difference in the world and maybe mm -hmm. bringing a little bit of beauty to mm -hmm. um, somebody's life. Is there a way that we could figure out how to, you know, take a request or see where there's a need, there's a loss, there's something that's kind of been hard in somebody's mm -hmm. life. And is there a way that we could come alongside and say, Hey, you know, we just want to, you know, give you this gift and say, Hey, this is awesome. We're, we're here for you. We, we care. Your story's mm -hmm. you know, been heard and it, it matters. So I don't really have anything more to say about that, except that I just think it's a cool idea and I'd love to see if we could figure out how to, how to make something like that happen. And yeah. I don't know, is, is anybody else interested in that kind of thing out there? Oh yeah. We have, we have people interested for sure. Um, and I know last week when that idea got brought up, there were a lot of people as well then that said, you know, we would love to do that. So, okay. Um, That'd be cool. Yeah. I definitely think we'd come out or come up with an awesome system for that. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Um, It'd be cool. It would be cool. I feel cool. like, and, and I think too, like if you guys have ideas about that, um, you know, we're, we're always open to ideas. And one of the things that's kind of interesting is that Peter and Renee and I had scheduled out a whole bunch of world tour dates and, mm -hmm. you know, where we're going and all this stuff. But we left, we'd actually left some of the dates in between totally empty. And it wasn't uh, because we were trying to think of something else to do, but it was just, we just hadn't filled them in. And now mm -hmm. we're looking at it and thinking, well, we have some extra dates and maybe we could do some other special kind of nights where it's, it's a little bit different than a world tour, but we're maybe giving something away or we're, we're trying to find a cause to support or I don't know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you have ideas um, that you want to share with us, um, we're open to them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I like the sky the way it is, guys. I think I'm just going to leave it. I'm just waiting to see how many moans or groans <laughs> I can get out of people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not having that deep affliction issue, it's amazing. So, What'd you say? I, I said I'd be happy to win the painting tonight. Oh. <laughs> having those conflicted issues about the, the mountain line. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were thinking it was funny because Ted, Ted entered the, the, the contest tonight, right, as we were getting started. Yeah. And we were thinking, oh, that would look really like a setup if he won. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so I'm going to get up into that sky. Let's go up there. Look at this nice little black corner I left there, too. <laughs> Gonna be fun to cover. Uh, Is there anybody painting along with me tonight? Good question. 
There's always somebody that that does it that I I didn't know about. Like uh, I, I'll get texts from people or different stuff, and I'll be like, mm-hmm. oh cool, like that person was totally painting. I didn't even know it. <laughs> and the thing that's hard is that like when you're painting, it's hard to be texting at the same time. So it's yeah. it's like you kind of can't do too many things. Let's see if this works. I hope that this this works. This design. If it doesn't work, then it means I'm going to be spending a lot more time trying to fix this <laughs> after the show's over. <laughs> Man, I uh, my dad got hearing aids. I hope that his hearing aids are working better tonight. Like the other day he came over and they weren't they weren't working super great. Awesome. And it's always yeah, it's a bummer, man, because it's like you kind of take for granted, you know, just my dad's always had good hearing and, mm-hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, you know, I, I, uh, well, the reason I thought of it is because I just whistled. And when we were over at their house for oh. Christmas or something, I remember he, he was saying, like, Please, Jed, like, just don't whistle. Whistle, whistling, <laughs> not that fun. Oh, Susan. look at that! See that? Susan, <laughs> let's go. Susan's the mystery hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Susan, Susan. Do you want... oh, go ahead, Peter. Oh no, no, nothing, nothing. No, I was just gonna say, Susan, you've been there, and so tell tell us a little bit about. How has Ted just been an encourager to you, or how has he helped you as you <laughs> have been pursuing art, you know, over the years? Um, what has what has been helpful, you know, from your point of view, with Ted or with just, just the general idea of of uh, encouragement or support? Oh, I think it's huge. You have to have someone that to support you you have to have that other half you know that that other half that believes in you that believes more in you than you do in yourself Hmm. huge 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 yeah Mm -hmm. for sure it's a great encourager and it's kind of hard i think there's other spouses out there would say the same thing that I'm going to say that they, they always say good stuff. It's <laughs> like, you know, it's, I'm like, well, you're the husband and, you, and of course you're supposed to say that. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like you, you have to, you're like, are you saying that like you don't always trust it because you, you're like, well, you have to say that or is it, i I, I remember I had a friend who was my foreman one time, like in my one of my first jobs ever. He was actually mm-hmm. like my foreman, and he would always come by and he'd always say really nice things. And I'm not joking. He was most he was mostly joking, like he was be, he was always overly like, "Oh my goodness, you're doing such an awesome job. You're so <laughs> good at this." And yeah. and I don't think I know you're just being sarcastic and stuff. So. Like, but it still made me feel good. That was the weird thing about it was, you know, you can joke with somebody and you can either joke being mean or you can joke being like over the top nice. Yeah. At least that's what it felt like. He he was the over the top nice. Uh, yeah. And he, he, of course, would correct me if I needed to, you know, do something different. But mm-hmm. it was really weird because I just remember that whole time I would always think, even if he's joking, I feel so much better than if he'd come by and said, you suck, you know, like yeah. something like that. I know. But what's that like for you, Susan? Yeah. It, yeah. He, he's not joking. He's literally wired. He doesn't that. Yeah. He knows how to draw that. It's just the way he's wired. He knows how to draw the good out. And it's, it's, and he's, he's, it, it's real. He's not, it's, he's not uh-huh. it. so I do believe him when he tells me that he is my number one supporter. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That is awesome. 
Okay, well, Peter, I think that I'm going to um, wrap this up here. Yeah. And so um, do you want Sounds to good. run the little program? I can do that. And while we're doing that, Ted, do you have any anything else? I'm just going to look at this. Okay, here here's a question for you. I just... Um, Okay, so you said something about to help an artist who's struggling to get to work. Is that the the thing there? Do you just want to say something about that or anything else that you would want to just share with an artist? You know, because I, I always feel like sometimes I just want to say, you know, something. If there's an artist who's struggling or an artist who's feeling discouraged or an artist who's, you know, just going through something that's kind of hard. Like, how do you how, – what would you say? Is there anything – that you would help somebody with? Well, I mean, I, I, I think the main thing is what I would tell you is that you can do it because you can do it as a phrase that means I believe in myself. So the greatest person that needs to believe that they can do it is you. And, and as that belief in you increases, what's going to happen is you're just going to become more and more comfortable. I mean, some people might struggle with, okay, I don't want to get out of bed and be creative because I've had such negative reactions to me. But, but what I say is get out of bed and change somebody's opinion about you. Yeah. And you do it. With change the, the world. Well, right. You can actually change the world. Because you can do it by what you capture on that canvas and, and your self-expression and how. Mm. And that's why I think I, I, I hit on the thing, don't be an imitator, be a creator. Be who you are, let all of it come out, and then find the people that can help you move from where you're at to mm. the place that you're headed. And if you do that, then what's going to happen is you're going to be successful. And, and that's what we all care about. We just, we want to do a good job. Mm -hmm. Credit to, you know, to fall if, where credit's if, due. If I, can Hold just, on. if I can just interrupt, there's things. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that only you can bring to this world, not Jed, right. not Monet, not mm -hmm. Rem, only you. Mm -hmm. You are the only one that's created to bring a certain element into this world and art changes the world. It, we need art right now in this world. Yes, we do. Yeah. Amen. Well, I, I, I like that. Um, I was, that was kind of what made me ask that question at the beginning, Ted was, you know, like, does art matter? Because, I think I, I mean, I do believe it does matter, but there are times when I, when I wonder and I'm like, does it matter? Like, you know, I mean, you know, it's not always that I see it super clearly. Um, but I do think it matters. And I think, um, you know, what you're saying, Susan, about being, everybody is a different person and we all bring a different perspective and a different voice. It's just like, uh, just like anything, I mean, in a, in a choir or in a, you know, a, a group, if you only had drummers, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same as if you had all the instruments. Right. And, and it's, it's like, we all bring a little different voice, uh, and we have a different perspective and we know different people too. Right. Like, mm -hmm. so even if we're talking about something like, uh, sharing, these uh paintings or or you know maybe you know somebody who's going through something that man they would their life would really be encouraged with a painting you know maybe we mm -hmm. you know but i don't know that person and you don't know the person that i know and you know so there's so many different parts of that but i think that that's super helpful now ted i i just realized that you might have been in the middle of saying something so what were you do you have yeah. more no, I, I think I think this is a great period on the end of the sentence. Um, I, <laughs> you're, so many times people can just get captivated by fear 
and not take those steps out. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if we can somehow help you take that next step as you're hitting the end of the springboard, that's going to launch you, then that's, that's what we're here for. I mean, that's, that's the greatest thing that could happen. And I, and I think that maybe you're, maybe you say you struggle, maybe you don't know you're, you can do it. Maybe you don't even think that you can make money at it. Well, you won't know until you try Mm -hmm. and trying takes failure. So it just takes a little bit of getting over ourselves so that we can just literally be who we are created to be. Yeah. And like one, of, uh, one thing I've heard that I enjoy a lot too is like life's too short to worry about other people's, you know, criticism and stuff like that of you, you know, like g- do what you're passionate about. Um, yeah. I think we always admire people who, who do what they are passionate about um, mm-hmm. because we see that that has, you know, a lot of there's, a, but, but the, I think a lot of times we still, you know, it's, it's a, tr- it's kind of like, there's a, there's a, there's a, I don't know. There, it's what I think is cool about when you, um, Cause I mean, okay, here's a real life story. I, I was getting texts from a, a, a young guy who was like 18 or 19 and he, he, he was, he was trying to be a full-time artist and he had moved to Arizona and he was, he was texting me saying, Hey, I'm doing this, you know? And uh, I was like, Oh, that's cool. And he was asking for some advice and I was giving him a little bit of advice every once in a while. Um, and then I remember uh, a few weeks ago, he wrote back and he said, yeah, I decided I, it, I can't do it. It's too hard. And, and he was going to school. He was starting, he was going to end up going to school or something like that. And, you know, there's a lot of people who have um, taken a step, taken a, taken a risk, taken, taken, you know, how many businesses start and fail in the first two or three years, right? Um, I'm sure that if you looked at artists, it would be the same number, right? I mean, maybe even higher. I don't, I don't know. So I feel like there's this, there's a reality of, you know, it's, it's not necessarily easy. It's not necessarily just, you know, oh, you have a dream. Well, you you just, it'll, it'll automatically happen. But that's where I feel Mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you can't just blindly do something, but if you have, encouragement if you have support and if it is really a passion if it is something that you keep coming back to and you really Mm -hmm. then you know why not just move in that direction it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that you have to do it overnight it doesn't mean that you have to um you know drop everything and right now this is the only thing that wasn't the way it worked for me for me it was a bit of a process it was like Mm -hmm. because i wasn't gonna just drop everything and I had a wife and daughter and I couldn't, I wasn't going to say, well, you know, I'm just doing it. But at some point I did kind of have to let go of the boat <laughs> and I did kind of have to take that step and say, mm-hmm. okay, you know, here we go. And, um, yeah, so, but super, super fun. I don't know. This painting is looking pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So we do have a winner, Jed. So we got a winner. I'm excited. Who's the winner? All right, so uh, the winner of tonight's painting is uh, Kathy Hawking. Kathy, we are congratulations, so Kathy. Yeah, congratulations, and um, boy, you guys, um, thank you for being here. I'm just looking at um, some of these. Yeah, I know we got these cherry blossoms. I was, it was actually really funny last night. I was watching some something on YouTube with Willow. And this ad came on for, uh, it was like a Japanese tourist ad. And mm. it was it was really cool because almost every picture had these big trees that were just overflowing with cherry blossoms, whether it was mm. like a city scene or whether it was like these panoramic countryside scenes. Almost everyone had uh, these cherry blossoms. And I was like, this is weird. I've never once in my life had a... Uh, a tourist kind of ad come on while I'm on YouTube. And I said something about it. Renee said, that's because you're doing Tokyo tomorrow. <laughs> I know that yeah. <laughs> either YouTube knows a lot um, and they're really like dialing in those ads <laughs> or something. I don't know. But 
Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Remember that mm -hmm. we love you. We believe in you. We're proud mm -hmm. of you. And we hope that you are uh, just uh, encouraged and living life to the fullest. We're going to look forward to seeing you next week. So, yeah. Adios, um, everybody. Well, one, one oh, more wait, thing. One more thing. Yeah, yeah. One, one more thing. I, I just want to say. Um, so, guys, if you go to the our website, if you use the code FNL um, when signing up for a monthly membership, you get 50% off your first two months. So, um, we kind of put that together for, um, people who are here doing the live stream, you know, um, so there's a link for you in the description as well, if you're interested in that, but, um, that's, uh, that's all I had to say. So awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. All right, everybody have a really good night. Good night, and good night everybody. Weekend. Have a good evening. Good night.